Thank you so much for tuning into Stocks to Watch, your trusted source for investment information. I'm Ashley Berry, and we're welcoming Ross Orr, President and CEO of BackTech Environmental Corporation. Their proven environmental technology delivers effective and eco-friendly bio-leaching and remediation solutions to help process and recover metals, including gold, silver, and copper. They're listed on the Canadian Securities Exchange as BAC, the OTC in the U.S as BCCEF and the Frankfurt Exchange as 0B T1. Ross, welcome. Excited for this conversation today. Thanks, Ashley. Good to be here. So let's start with the environmental challenges you're addressing with your technology and the inspiration behind it. Well, I like to say we're the only nuts that go looking for arsenic because uh, a byproduct of our technology is the stabilization of arsenic. And a lot of people don't realize that arsenic is associated with gold and silver a lot. And it's what they call an indicator element. So geologists will follow that arsenic to eventually find what they hope to be a gold mine. Uh, we produce a, a, a benign form of arsenic. So uh, really, we're the only people to go looking for it. And so it's a very, very big market potentially for us to uh, to address. Very interesting. I also understand that you received final environmental and social impact assessment permit approval, um, developing a bio-leach processing facility in Ecuador. Can you elaborate on this project, its planned capacity, and of course, the significance of this approval? Well, I was contacted about five years ago by a young guy named uh, Bernardo Brito, who's now our country manager. Bernardo was a, a graduate of the Royal School of Mines in London, and was working for a Swiss uh, metal trading company in Ecuador, trading copper. And he noticed these, these one ton mining sacks leaving this area every day and heading for the coast. So he inquired, you know, what is that and where is it going? Well, that's, that's high arsenic gold concentrates that are going to China for processing. Hmm. And at the time, the Chinese were paying about 65 to 70 cents on the dollar for the gold value, be, the penalized because of the arsenic. Uh, what happened was the Chinese government, though, imposed an import tax about two years ago of around 13 percent that the buyer has just passed on to the miners. Now the miners are getting less than 50 cents on the dollar. So this fell right into our lap. This area produces a lot of, like I said, a lot of high arsenic gold concentrates, uh, you know, running sort of two ounces of gold per ton. So, you know, literally four thousand dollars a ton of value going out the door to be processed somewhere else. So the, the, the concept was to build a plant on, or in that area and become a regional processor for all of this material that's going to China. So obviously the government liked it because it's an environmental aspect to it. And of course, you're keeping business at home. You're not exporting all your value to China. So it was a no-brainer, I mean, really from, from their point of view. And given the, the struggles that the government has there to, to address uh, mining issues and oil and gas issues. They're always looking for technologies that are going to do something greener. And along comes back tech and, and our bugs eat rocks. That's exactly what we do. <laughs> your bugs eat rocks. And, you know, I think your commitment to the <clears throat> environmental sustainability is so important and really has such a profound impact. Uh, you also have expansion plans in other areas of Latin America and actually in Ontario, Canada. Can you walk us through those plans and, and the scale you aim to achieve there? Well, the, the principal sulfide mineral that the bacteria like to eat is called arsenopyrite, which is an arsenic sulfide. <clears throat> excuse me, the sulfides are the glue that holds everything together. So you, what, what you have is you have these pockets around the world of areas where arsenopyrite has been the predominant sulfide that's been pushed up from the core of the earth and, and solidified into these, these deposits. Um, so Northern Peru is another example. Uh, that's called energite or energite, which is a copper gold arsenic. That's That's probably number two Sorry, that's number three. Number two is expanding the existing plant from 50 tons a day of material. Oh, this is concentrate, by the way, up to, say, over 200 to 250 tons a day. And just to be clear for your, your listeners, concentrate is about 20 percent of the rock has the value. 80 percent has no value. 20 percent has the value, which is the sulfides, which is what the bacteria like to eat, basically. So there's Colombia, there's Central America, and of course there's areas in between Timmins and Valdor that also have a high prevalence of arsenopyrite. Uh, it's gonna be a little trickier in Canada than it is in South America or Central America because 
people are going to mine no matter what the price is in, in South America. In Canada, if I told them I was going to pay them 70 cents on the dollar, they'd probably say, no, 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 <laughs> mm-hmm. we're not going to do that. So, uh, but time will time will, will, will get us to that stage. I, I should say, though, that in Ontario, we are doing an R&D uh, project on what's called puritite, which is going to break down a, a sulfide that has about 60% iron. Uh, the, there's about 100 million tons of this stuff sitting in lakes ir- around Sudbury, Canada, that have been dumped there over the last 100 years. Mm. So what we want to do is break that up and, and, and put that iron into a form where it can go into, into steel manufacture, you know, green steel. And there's a big move in that industry to 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 get greener. Fantastic. I mean, that actually sounds very interesting. It's called Puritite. That's what you said. Puritite. It's, it's for spelling is P-Y-R-R. H O T I T E. So it's it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't sound like it looks. <laughs> but I'm I'm thinking you know for our listeners and our viewers, um, it's sitting in lakes being dumped, uh, and then you being able to extract that and 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 sort of recreate uh, the energy as far as that's concerned. That's that's pretty amazing. So what, it is what, amazing. It's, yeah, it's something we did it. We did it 20 years ago. Okay. We, we did bioleaching a puritite, but we found all we did was create a lot of waste that we didn't know what to do with. Mm. Fast forward 20 years, and with new technology of, of, say, of filtration, getting that iron out of solution, we're also going to produce nickel and cobalt. You remember, these? this material came from the Inco and Falconbridge mining nickel for 100 years. This is the stuff they didn't want because it's very volatile. That's why it's underwater, so that it wouldn't combust on its own. Uh, so we're going to help it. We're going to split it into the various components, and we hope to sell each component individually. So the hopefully the sum of the parts is worth more than the whole. And are you able to share a timeline or, or when you might be able to start beginning this process? I would say the pilot plant is just nearing completion right now in Sudbury. Um, right. We'll be using material from Valet because they own probably 75% of the, uh, of the waste. Uh, Glencore would own the balance. Uh, but you're talking about 60 million tons of of iron here. So you know, uh, just to the west of Sudbury is Algoma, which, where they make carbon sheet. So they would be a natural buyer of this of this sort of material. And of course, the the battery companies would buy the uh, the cobalt and the nickel. And your commitment to you know the environmental impact, as we talked about, um, you know, for investors looking to invest in, in in a really strong, important mission around environmental sustainability, what would you say to them to get interested in Backtech Environmental? I would say you have a situation where green makes money, which is a lot of times is not the case. Um, it's great that you can do something green and, and stop a problem, but if you can make money at it, it's even better. Mm. And in our time frame, our timeline, you know, we're, we're setting out to raise 20 million right now uh, for this uh, for the first plant in a green bond that Moody's actually uh, gave us a very good 80% rating on. Uh, that was sort of the first step that we needed to make sure the ESG companies so investors knew that we were real and, and somebody else had vetted our technology. So we were pretty happy with that. Um, so assuming that we close that early in, 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 uh, 2024, realistically, we can be up and producing, uh, by January of 25, it'll be about a year to, to build and, and test the, uh, make sure work out all the bugs, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so that's a near term catalyst. We immediately start the expansion right, right away, uh, to go from 50 tons a day to somewhere between 200 to 250 tons a day, which is the capacity of that market. Uh, that would produce over 100,000 ounces of gold uh, at great margins. I forgot to mention uh, one of the uh, sweeteners that the government gave us uh, was a 12-year tax holiday, which was unbelievable. So we signed an international protection agreement. So if there's any issues we have in country, it'll be mediated in, say, Washington or London. And the other part of it was a tax holiday for 12 years for bringing this new biotechnology, you know, technology to the country. Right. Um, so that's one. Um, and finally, I guess the um, uh, the fact that we we have we have very measurable ESG components and and, and outcomes, which is really uh, getting around the whole greenwashing problem that exists in the ESG market, where people make claims that are ridiculously. Uh, tied to their green ability, so to speak. Ours are very identifiable, di- excuse me, identifiable. We don't produce SO2 emissions. We don't produce any gases. 
We produce a benign form of arsenic. Um, you know, it's it's a win, win, win. And I hate that expression, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, listen, it sounds like with the government support there, um, you know, giving you the, the tax holiday, obviously they believe in your mission. And like you said, many milestones coming up within the next year or so. Uh, so I guess your uh, advice to investors is to get in and get in early. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to talk about our, we have a private placement we're doing right now. We're raising a million dollars. Um, that is working capital. Uh, the twenty million is the big nut, and that's that's specifically, you know, directed to building that first plant and getting it up and running. Hmm. Wonderful. Well, we wish you the best of luck. It was such a pleasure speaking with you, Ross Orr, President and CEO of Backtech Environmental Corporation. Thanks for your time today, for joining Stocks to Watch, and we look forward to additional updates. Thank you. I enjoyed it.